Meredith, if you can unmute. Hey, Aaron. Uh, just checking if there's anything new with Masahiro Tanaka today. Uh, no. Um, you know, just taking it slow. Um, he's doing well, but but not much to report on activity-wise. Any indication from Sessa or LeMahieu if they may be arriving soon? No indication yet. As far as Garrett Cole is concerned, Luke Voigt just spoke about how he stepped into the batter's box against him the other day, and he looked like he was essentially in midseason form. Uh, what have you seen from him, not only throwing with him, but just at the stadium as well? Yeah, that. I mean, he's he's been, uh, you know, you know, able to get a lot of quality work in. I feel like uh, while we've been while we've been away, um, you know, so you know, obviously was was able to th throw three innings. Um, or three ups in, in the in the sim game the other day and was able to drive his pitch count up. So he's he's been sharp. The stuff has been really good, even on the most benign day, you know, where we're just working on some things. So um, I, I do feel like he's in a really good spot um, right now in his progression and uh, excited to see him take another step tonight. Yesterday before the game, Miguel Andujar was out early, taking some reps at third base. What's the plan for him now? I know in spring training you had talked about using him perhaps in the outfield, but uh, that situation has probably maybe changed a little bit. Um, not really. He's he he's going to play the outfield tonight, um, so we'll kind of move him back and forth. He's been getting his defensive work in the outfield as well. I believe it was two days ago he did all of his. You know, all of when we're out doing our defensive work, he did his stuff with the outfielders. So he's he's balancing between the two. I think part of that early work yesterday was just coming off a day where he had some outfield work. He wanted to get some extra reps, especially with the rain coming uh, yesterday. Um, so he continues to work at both spots, and we continue to be excited about him uh, in his ability to play the corners in the outfield, but also obviously a third. We could take our next question from Sweeney Murdy. Sweeney, go ahead and unmute. Hey, Aaron, two things real quick. The exhibition games that came out today, the first one is five days before your opener. Mm -hmm. Will you look to use Cole in that first game so he can face other hitters? We'll see. Um, you know, we've we've talked about that a little bit, he and I, um, but we haven't settled on that. Um, it just depends on, you know, where what we put the premium on. If we feel like he's getting quality work in and we want to have that sixth day, for instance, going into his – first start um we'll just see how these how the progression continues to happen and that'll be a conversation that we have and and a and a decision that we'll make closer to that date okay. and regarding aaron judge can you clarify something on his timeline he said yesterday that he started swinging a couple of weeks maybe a month ago was he held back from swinging that long because he was still healing, or were you just waiting for the anticipation of the season before you start ramping? Up? Yeah, you know, I think in a lot of ways it timed up kind of perfectly. It worked out really well. So we we're certainly um, waiting um, because because we wanted that the bone to heal properly. Um, so timing wise, I feel like it kind of worked out. Um, you know, they started the progression, which which was obviously it started from you know him swinging in a pool to doing dry swings and stuff. Um, you know, at a point that they deemed it was safe for him to start doing that, and uh, it it kind of just has coincided with it working out perfectly to this point as far as where we are in camp and when the opening day is going to be. Mm -hmm. Take the next question from Kenny Davidoff. Kenny, you can unmute. How am I doing? You're all right. <laughs> Not, no. Unmute. You got to unmute, Kenny. I think it's something with the post, man. <laughs> there we go. Look. We got action. You guys got to yes. have some Zoom training over there at the post. I don't know what the hell it is. <laughs> uh, Aaron, um, uh, just with Tanaka, are, is it a matter of you don't – slot him in for a spot until he's back uh, doing things? Obviously, concussions, as we know, are so uh, unpredictable and day by day. Yeah, yeah, and I just I just don't want to get into speculating too much day in and day out. The reality is he's, he's doing well, he's responded well, but we also want to be incredibly careful with this and make sure he's 
checking all the boxes while he's in uh, concussion protocol. And uh, just regarding the uh, the exhibition games, the announcement today, just the, mm -hmm. the excitement for that next step, and then you know you get a little subway series, which you typically don't play the yeah. that often in, in in Florida. Uh, yeah. So just. Uh, yeah, we're we're excited. You know, it's it to to work out to be able to have a few games. I think is is something that's important and something that you know we put a little value a, a lot of value on but to be able to have it here in our in our home city to have a couple of games um you know it, it's something that certainly we'll look forward to and and hopefully you know for us it'll be something that um gives us a, a really good tune-up heading into the regular season thanks Aaron. Mm -hmm. take the next question from james wagner james go ahead Hey Aaron, um, hope all is well. I know the last few months, like when people were, you know, looking at ways to change the game uh, for this season, um, it just was an opportunity for people just to broadly to discuss like things that could be improved about the game. So this is just unrelated to whether it's a rule that they put in place for this year or just in general. Is there anything that during the that you would want to change about baseball or the way it's played? Uh, just as an opportunity. I know again, like the last few months, yeah. they were looking at many different things to improve it, whether it's something on the field or the way it's played or just in general that you always wanted. Change no, there's not necessarily. Um, you know, <laughs> I got a lot of a lot of feedback from my my run rule comment last year <laughs> that that people took and ran with a little bit. Um, I, I would say this, you know, in a lot of ways, I'm traditional and love the game and love how it's always been. But I also feel like when good ideas come down the pike, that you know, I'm open to it and. You know, I think along the way, um, you have some good ideas that that stick and take hold that that are for the betterment of our game, and some things that that don't necessarily work out. But I'm usually open to trying some things if if they're not too radical uh, in the immediate. Eric Bolin, you have the next question. You can go ahead and unmute. Hey, Aaron. Uh, news came out today that um, on the twentieth anniversary of 9-11 you guys will be playing the Mets at City Field and I'm mm. just wondering what your your reaction to that is. Um, wow I, I didn't yeah I didn't consider that um, and that's next year Aaron just so you know huh oh right that'll be next year yeah um, I mean it is so far in the future and especially with all we're dealing with right now it's it's hard to you know I haven't given it the thought and I but <clears throat> that's something I, I can't imagine how emotional and how powerful a, of a, of an event that could be. Um, you know, knowing, you know, when, when, when I was a player going through that, I was with the Cincinnati Reds and I, I just knew just remembering back to how impactful it was for us, you know, when it, when it occurred, we happened to be in Chicago and then just coming back at the end of the season and playing those games and kind of watching from afar, you know, the Mets, Mike Piazza versus Braves game that that just was so emotional, obviously, um, you know, and, and then obviously the, the the amazing World Series that went on and, and the and the games here in the Bronx and in the World Series. Um, I would imagine, especially all that we have gone through this year, maybe adding another layer of just how potentially powerful and emotional of a of a game and a day and an event that might be, um, it, it's it's something that hopefully um, you know we're all a part of and and it and it it'll get the magic that it deserves. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Take the next question from Christy Ackert. Christy. Hi, Aaron. I'm just curious. I know that we're in a situation that this, this is the best that anyone can do. Um, but having your hitters face your pitchers mm -hmm. during spring training so much, is there any, what are the benefits of it, one, and what would be the concerns you would have about having that happen? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know that I'm overly concerned. I mean, first and foremost, you, you got to make evaluations about where you think your players are, especially where you think your pitchers are. Uh, coming in and who's ready to handle, you know, what level of bullpens, what level of live BP, what level of, of inter-squad game. Um, and I do feel like, uh, by and large, our guys have, have come in here 
very much ready to kind of hit the ground running in that regard, in that respect. And so I just think there's incredible value to, you know, our pitchers facing real hitters in real situations because we, we are in a situation where we're now, you know, just over two weeks out from, from playing for real. Um, and then also the hitters and, 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 you know, you always hear about timing and, and it's so important and to get live reps as many as possible. Um, and, and while trying to kind of be creative and smart about how we build up their legs in, in the field and running the bases and things like that. But I do feel like we're ready from a pitching standpoint and a hitting standpoint to see live pitching. So we're going to try and take advantage of that as much as we can. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Brendan Cuddy, you can unmute. You have the next question. Hey, Aaron. Hey. You guys are about two weeks from opening day, maybe three weeks from needing a fifth starter. With wanting to be careful with Masahiro, are you guys evaluating now who you might throw with the rotation if Masahiro isn't ready to go? I mean, we haven't dove in that much. We, we feel really good about a lot of the options that we do have, a lot of our depth, you know, we feel like, you know, and I talked a lot in spring about especially a lot of our younger guys that have now appeared on our 40 man that, you know, in theory might be a little ways away. Um, so we feel like our depth of pitchers now from from the 12th and 13th pitcher on a on a on a team to all the way now our 15th and 16th, but our 20th, 21st, 22nd pitchers. You know, we feel like are potentially capable of 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 getting important outs for us. So, um, you know, we we haven't made any decisions by any means. Um, you know, these are important days to evaluate where guys are. Um, but I do feel like we'll have good options as we get closer to to be as creative as we have to be um, to try and be a great club. Thank you. We'll take a couple more. Uh, Brian Hoke, if you can unmute, you can ask the next question. Hey, Booney, just to follow up on what uh, Cuddy just asked, uh, do you think a four-man rotation could work? How would that work for you? Um, not in the sense of four guys and then, you know, number one goes again on the on the fourth day or on the fifth day, you know. I, no, I, I, I don't think that's an option. Now, we we may get creative depending if we had to be. Um, you know, obviously we did a lot of situations out of necessity last year with openers and, and things like that. So, um, obviously to start the season, you're going to have 30 players. So you're going to have more pitching to choose from. Um, so there may be days in there where you do get a little creative, where it's a bullpen day or, uh, you know, you try and maximize your roster as best as possible and, and put guys in positions to where they can really impact the game on a given day. So um, those are things we'll explore, talk about, and, uh, you know, hopefully I, I feel good that we'll be in a good situation just because I have a lot of confidence in the depth of our pitching right now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll take a last one from Bob Clappish. Bob, go ahead and unmute. Can you hear me? Yeah. Howdy, how are you? Good. Um, I, I'm just wondering now, after having seen uh, Cole pitch uh, in spring training and again now in summer camp, obviously you've competed against him from afar, but I wonder if you've learned over time over these last couple of months what makes him such a unique talent. And it's, obviously it's not just talent. There's more to his craft than that. Uh, what is it about him um, that enhances the, the obvious skill that he brings to the mat in terms of his work ethic or how much he studies pitching itself. What what do you see about him that separates him from other pitchers? Yeah, maybe maybe partly his intelligence and his and his aptitude and his ability to throughout his career, um, you know, be able to make adjustments, um, you know, from from being the first pick to going and being an outstanding pitcher with the Pittsburgh Pirates, but kind of evolving into an even greater pitcher when he went to Houston, the the ability to change some things from a, from a rep repertoire standpoint. Um, but when you all, and I think he really understands his body and how to get himself in great shape and, and not only to be, you know, enhance all his physical 
qualities on the mound, but also has allowed him to, you know, stay relatively healthy and strong. I think he understands himself in that way um, really well. But when you really boil it all down, it's, it's, you know, four elite pitches with an outstanding athletic delivery and, 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 and a, you know, killer instinct and a, and a desire to be great at his craft. And, uh, you know, you add those things all up and you've got, you know, the game's best.